Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Hollywood Harry Show this week. I am, of course, your host, Hollywood Harry. Now, I think by now everybody knows I am running for President of the United States, and I would like to discuss a few of my platforms today. Let's talk about legalizing drugs, first of all. First of all, let's face it, the the way it's set up right now, illegal drugs, it's just not working. The prisons are full of people with drugs. It's just not working. Legalize it. Let's take a shot, see what happens. And I'm going to tax the daylights out of it. You can guarantee that. I'm going to raise a little money for myself on that. Jobs, another big issue. I know everybody's concerned about jobs. Well, other than my 29 cents a gallon gasoline, which is going to happen, everybody at the White House who comes to the White House, I'm going to give a job everyone at the White House. Could be eight, nine million of us. Everyone who comes to the job, who needs a job, yeah, is going to come to the White House, and I'm going to give them a job. Free jobs at the White House. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little pause, come right back, go talk to the voters and see what they have to say. Stay right there. That'll be 1550 for the pizza. You got any gold? These days, seems like everybody is trying to buy your gold. Hey lady, I'll give you 20 bucks for those earrings. But not everyone will pay you top dollar. At Lebanon Jewelry and Coin Exchange, 612 South Cumberland, we're always buying gold 2975 South Rutherford Boulevard in Murfreesboro. We have been buying jewelry, coins, sterling silver, even broken jewelry for over 20 years. We will weigh your items right in front of you and pay you top dollar in cash. So bring your gold to one of these two locations. Why take your chances anywhere else? Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? Okay, back here on the campaign trail. It's grueling, but we're back. Okay, your first name? Uh, Wolfie. Wolfie. Uh, your mom gave you that name at birth? Well, it name at birth was a uh, Wally Nielsen. Wiley Nielsen. Wiley, as you know, I'm running for president of the United States, and I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Well, you can ask me a few questions. I might give you some bent answers, but i tell you what, I, I heard you was running for president. A guy like you has probably got a lot of crazy answers, but I just want to ask you how you feel about legalizing drugs. I love, the, I love it. It keeps me from going to jail. You got any? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what would you do to create jobs in this country? Well, if I could, I'd legalize marijuana all the way across the United States and make every other person a grower. Okay. Medically like approved. Think of the taxes we can raise. Oh, think of the hell we can raise. Okay, who are you going to vote for for president? Barack, uh, but, hold on. Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood Harry, or Roseanne Barr? Well, I don't know. Roseanne Barr's running a, a pretty close second right there. But uh, I figure if I'm going to get a sucker out of this deal, I'm going to vote for you. And a sucker you will get. <laughs> Matches the color of my exes from right. Texas. <laughs> okay, uh, your first name is? Tim. Tim, where are you from? Columbia, Tennessee. All right, Tim, as you know, I'm running for president of the United States. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, look what I'm up against, you know? Uh, okay. All right. All right. I'd just like to ask you a few questions sure. here. Uh, we've got a lot of important campaign issues, but I think one of the biggest ones is the legalization of drugs. How do you feel about drugs? that? Drugs? Well... Maybe a few things, but not not heroin or cocaine. I don't know. That that's that's got to be on the black markets because, you know, that way we can stay on top of it, right? So you're okay with like marijuana? Well, or maybe not. Why not? Okay. Why not? I, I, guess, I guess it's unanimous. I give up wine. Okay. Uh, how would you create jobs in this country? I'd open all these factories back up and put people to work instead of you know let them pay into the system and have, instead of having draw out of the system. Okay. Who are you going to vote for for president? Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood Harry, or Roseanne Barr? Now, are you Hollywood Harry? I'm him. I guess I'll have to vote secret ballot. Secret ballot? Yeah. No sucker for you. What? No sucker for you. The City Cafe East is the best kept lunch secret in Nashville. If you're starving and want real home cooked food, this is the place. 
Folks, this is the best meat and three in Nashville. Chef George prepares mouth-watering specials every day. Choose from baked chicken, pork chops, turkey and dressing, and of course, the best roast beef anywhere. The City Cafe East, the best meat and three in town, is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 2.30 for your convenience. City Cafe East, 1455 Levin and Pike at Spence Lane. The way cooking should be. Import Auto Connection in Nashville. We have minivans, SUVs, pickup trucks from Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Lexus, Infiniti, and Scion. And we have a 30-day warranty on all vehicles. Import Auto Connection in Nashville. We finance everyone, regardless of credit history. Here's a 2010 Nissan Altima with only 3,800 miles. How about a 2011 Honda Accord with less than 3,000 miles? Or a 2010 Jeep Wrangler with only 8,000 miles? Heck, David, finance me! Import Auto Connection, we'll see you right here! Okay, your first name is? Jimmy. Jimmy, where are you from? Uh, Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois is okay. As you know, I'm running for President of the United States. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Actually, I didn't know you was running, but all right, you can ask me some questions. Right, you do now. Okay, <laughs> how do you feel about the legalization of drugs? Well, I'm all right with marijuana. Just marijuana? Yeah. Seems to be the common, uh, the common threat, just marijuana. and Everybody doesn't want everything else legalized. Probably wouldn't be a good idea. Okay, if it was up to you, how would you create jobs? Seems to be one of the biggest problems in this country. As, as everybody has heard what I would do, which is I'm going to give everybody a job in the White House. Uh, everyone's going to work at the White House, and everybody who wants a job will be there. So we're going to be a little overcrowded, but that's my answer is, uh, on top of the 29-cent gasoline. But what would you do? Open up the marijuana fields. Well, another one. Uh, okay. Who are you going to vote for for president? Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood Harry, or Roseanne Barr? Hollywood Harry. And a sucker for you. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, your name is? Kelly. Kelly, where are you from? Kentucky. Kelly, uh, as you know or probably don't know, I'm running for president of the United States. I'd like to just ask you a few questions. Okay. Okay, Kelly, how do you feel about the legalization of drugs? Um, well, I guess it just depends on what kind it is. <laughs> are you for it or against it? For some of it. For some of it. Like, yeah. you're probably marijuana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, 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 it's obvious. Everybody wants marijuana legal. <laughs> if, you were, uh, if you had a chance to help the economy, how would you create jobs? Get Obama out of office. Oh, get Obama out of office. Obama. Okay, so who are you going to vote for? Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood <laughs> Harry, or Roseanne Barr? Hollywood Harry's got a better chance than any of them. <laughs> Thank you, and a sucker for you. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Woo. Kelly. Thank you. Hope everybody's having a good time here at the Redneck Rumble. Now, from everybody I've talked to on the campaign trail the last month and a half, I think I'm going to win. Everybody's going to vote for me. I only got a couple people that really don't like me. I'm kind of happy. I think I'm going to the White House. I really do. This is looking pretty good. I'm really happy about this. Okay, uh, your name is? Ricky Bobby. Ricky, where are you from? Manchester, Tennessee. Uh, Ricky, what is this contraption here we're looking at? Ah, uh, that's the final ride. Uh, it's a it's a death trap, probably. Uh, it's got a little 270 Hemi in it. Uh, it's just a 28 sedan is what it started out life as before it got cut and chopped. Uh, How long did it take you to make this contraption? I have to call it a contraption. Yeah. Uh, Friday was 11 weeks uh, when I brought it up here Friday. I've been working on 11 weeks, and that's uh, making the frame from scratch. Um, patching the car up, had to have quarter panels, door skins, cows. I mean, this car was junk. Is this roadworthy? Oh, yeah. You could drive this on the street? Anywhere. anywhere. How fast can you go on this thing? <laughs> How crazy are you? Uh, well, how crazy are you? I'm not driving it. Uh, I try to keep it under 80, you know. It does 80, no problem. All right, Ricky, thanks a lot. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, uh, your first name is? Catherine. Catherine, where are you from? I'm from Franklin, Tennessee. About time we got some pretty girls on the show. What do you think out there? Well, there's a lot of pretty bikes and trucks there and a lot of pretty men here, too. I mean, my God, look at you and Boa. Oh, oh thank you, thank you. Uh, as you know or don't know, I'm running for president of the United I States. Did know that. And I'd just like to ask you a few questions, okay? Sure. How do you feel about the legalization of drugs? Well, I think drugs have their place in society. They have their place. Are you for it or against it? I'm for uh, medicinal use of all kinds of drugs. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's a good one because I'm totally for the legalization of drugs completely because the way it's now, it's not working. It's not working. Okay. If you had your the power, how would you create new jobs? Well, I would um, stop waging war on the um, small business owner 
and I would start letting people get out and work. And um, even if that was picking up trash on the side of the road, that's honorable work. Okay. Now I want to ask you who you're going to run for or vote for for president. Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood Harry, or Roseanne Barr? I'm going to vote for Hollywood Harry. And a sucker for you. Thank you, pretty lady. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Okay, uh, your name is? Amy Mitchell. Amy, and where are you from? Nashville. Nashville? Yes. Johnny, uh, get a shot of these shoes here, okay, please? These are beautiful, all right? I think she'd be a good vice presidential uh, running mate no yesterday. <laughs> Amy, uh, I just want to ask you a few questions. Okay. If you do or didn't know, I'm running for president of the United States. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'd just like to ask you, how do you feel about the legalization of drugs? You know what? I am all for it, actually. Okay. So am I. And if you were, <laughs> say you were president, you had the power, how would you create jobs in this country? Okay. I would actually, um, I'd have to crack down on illegal immigrants and send them back. Oh. Ship them right back. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but they're doing all the work. But you know what? That's work that could go to uh, U.S. citizens. Okay. Now, I just want to ask you who you're going to vote for for president. Barack Obama, Nitwit Mitt, Hollywood Harry, or Roseanne Barr? Mm, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr? She's very sassy. I like that. No sucker for you. The City Cafe East is the best kept lunch secret in Nashville. If you're starving and want real home cooked food, this is the place. Folks, this is the best meat and three in Nashville. Chef George prepares mouth-watering specials every day. Choose from baked chicken, pork chops, turkey and dressing, and of course, the best roast beef anywhere. The City Cafe East, the best meat and three in town, is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 2.30 for your convenience. City Cafe East, 1455 Lebanon Pike at Spence Lane. The way cooking should be. Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? In my city, mad friend, wishing I retired. Cause it's the movement. I told y'all, Jonesy, Jesse. That'll be fifteen fifty for the pizza. You got any gold? These days, seems like everybody is trying to buy your gold. Hey lady, I'll give you 20 bucks for those earrings. But not everyone will pay you top dollar. At Lebanon Jewelry and Coin Exchange, 612 South Cumberland, we're always buying gold 2975 South Rutherford Boulevard in Murfreesboro. We have been buying jewelry, coins, sterling silver, even broken jewelry for over 20 years. We will weigh your items right in front of you and pay you top dollar in cash. So bring your gold to one of these two locations. Why take your chances anywhere else? Merry Christmas, hallelujah. We finally got a big time celebrity on the show. Pete Weber, voice of the Nashville Predators. And Pete, uh, I think you're as much a part of the Nashville Predators history as any player, personnel, management, owners, all, because you've been there from the start. Since uh, day, the first day of training camp, September 12, 1998. So there were some people who preceded me. They were in the front office, and uh, they were out scouting the players before that first expansion draft. Well, everybody in Nashville knows who you are. That's a fact, Jack, including myself, because I, I'm a big Predators fan. I love hockey. Well, hockey is my game, so having you here is, is really an honor and a privilege. And uh, it's thank you for showing up here because not every big-time celebrity will come and sit with me for this taping. I don't know why not. I, I know it's hard to believe. Pete, let's go back to last year. Uh, how disappointed were you when the Predators got knocked out of the playoffs? I don't know if disappointed really sums up uh, what my feelings were at that point in time. It took a long time to recover from it uh, mentally. And uh, watching the, uh, I guess what helped me the most, my hockey alma mater, my first NHL club I woke for, worked for, went on to win the Stanley Cup. That I helped helped me work the out LA quite Kings. a bit. Yes, yeah, right. so I got out to LA for uh, games three and four of the finals. Do you know Nick Nixon? Oh yeah, Nick Nick took my place when I left. No kidding. Yes, you should probably wish you were still there. Huh? Well, you know, <laughs> in the aftermath of, uh, geez, I've not been there since 1981. I have a feeling that you know things should be passed on, as was our founding owner, Jack Kent Cook. He passed on quite right. some time ago. You think the two guys being suspended during the playoffs hurt the team then? 
I mean, we on the outside don't know really. Do you right. think that set them back to the point where they lost, or they would have lost anyhow? And here's the strange thing. They win the first game with yeah. those guys sitting out. So then, no coach wants to, you know, play with the chemistry that worked out for a victory. So, the next game they were not suspended, but they were held out because they weren't part of the winning effort. I don't know that that was the big point of determining that series. I just think that uh, we have to give Phoenix credit for playing as well as they did, and probably give uh, Tampa Bay some uh, discredit for not realizing what they had in their net with Mike Smith and letting him go to Phoenix. My gosh, you're not kidding. Well, looking on, forget last year, let's worry about next year. Okay, folks, we'll be right back. Let's take a pause for the cause. We'll be right back with Pete Weber. Okay, we're back with our guest, Pete Weber. Pete, uh, on to this year in the offseason. Uh, Ryan Suter, I thought he was going to stay, and I think everybody else thought he was going to stay, and we're going to make this the Stanley Cup shot and uh, at the last minute he kind of looked like he was talked out of it by the guy in Minnesota. What do you think? What, tell us what you know about this. What I know about it is that he said his bottom line was a chance to be with his uh, family. His wife's family is there from the Twin Cities. What I also know about it was from the very outset David Boyle thought, maybe not a slam dunk, but he thought it was going to be pretty uh, relatively easy to retain Ryan's services and even in an effort to do that he went so far as to also offer, similar like the contract, to Zach Parisi, who ended up joining Ryan, uh, going to the Minnesota Wild. So I, I'd have to say that in reading the situation, uh, Ryan surprised Predators management. He surprised everybody. Yeah. We were positive both of them. Okay. And, he, and he surprised Wild management, too. I'll put it that yeah, way for I bet. you. Yeah, know, they offered him this pretty much the same money. Right. And it, is, it assumed that these two guys were going to be back. And, you know, here's two of the best defensemen in the NHL. And right. Gone. Will they get by without uh, Ryan Suter? I think that they can. Will they? That's another matter altogether. I mean, when he had Suter and Weber together for so long, it really reminded me of what we had uh, in St. Louis with Chris Pronger working with Al McKinnis there, as they did for a number of years. Uh, difficult. You don't replace Ryan Suter necessarily, but you get somebody else in his spot. It looks like it's going to be Roman Yossi to get it started. He had a pretty impressive rookie year uh, with the club, and now you have to fill in other places because guys are going to have to be stepping up and take those minutes. Ryan Suter played 26 minutes a game. Is Roman Yossi ready to assume all of that? That's a lot to expect from a second-year player. You know, when you see a team that gets as close as they did, it appears that you have to improve to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Where do they improve this year? Just the players getting a year older, a year better, acquiring new players? I mean, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about how do we get to that next level? Got a great goalie, got yeah. Shea Weber oh, oh. back, you know? Yeah. And have all the forwards virtually back from its club that was eighth in the league in scoring this last year. So you want to get, I guess, more timely scoring. That comes as well from your experience level. And if that can uh, lead them to success, let's see. Okay, folks, we've got to take another pause for the cause. We'll be right back with Pete Weber. Don't go anywhere. The City Cafe East is the best-kept lunch secret in Nashville. If you're starving and want real home-cooked food, this is the place. Folks, this is the best meat and three in Nashville. Chef George prepares mouth-watering specials every day. Choose from baked chicken, pork chops, turkey and dressing, and of course, the best roast beef anywhere. The City Cafe East, the best meat and three in town, is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 2.30 for your convenience. City Cafe East, 1455 Lebanon Pike at Spence Lane. The way cooking should be. Let's face it, the economy is terrible. Here's a chance to make an extra $1,400 a month. Who couldn't use that? Import Auto Connection in Nashville. We have minivans, SUVs, pickup trucks from Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Lexus, Infiniti, and Zion. And we have a 30-day warranty on all vehicles. Import Auto Connection in Nashville. We finance everyone, regardless of credit history. Here's a 2010 Nissan Altima with only 3,800 miles. How about a 2011 Honda Accord with less than 3,000 miles? Or a 2010 Jeep Wrangler with only 8,000 miles? Heck, David, finance me! Import Auto Connection, we'll see you right here! Okay, we're back with our guest, Pete Weber. Pete, uh, 
Let's uh, talk a little about your previous history in broadcasting. You've been around here. Well, how long clubs. do we have? Six minutes. Oh, okay. Five? What do we got, Jenny? Okay, we'll count. Five minutes. Okay. I know you've had a big tie-in with the Buffalo Bills, as I have a little bit, nothing like you, but we're, I guess we're Buffalo Bills fans, and we have to admit it, even be here in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, too, too many, many years to throw that away. Too many years, exactly. Too much heartache, okay? Yeah. Um, t tell me a little bit about your years in Buffalo and, and, and so forth there. When I started out covering the Bills, Lou Saban was coach in his second incarnation. Oh, my God, team. folks. You don't ever heard uh, of Lou Saban. Probably none of you have ever heard of Lou Saban. O.J. Simpson was holding out in training camp. He came back on the eve of the kickoff for 76, Monday night football game against the Miami Dolphins. And that was in that decade where the Bills never beat the Dolphins in the 70s. 20 straight. Right. And yet, O.J. comes okay. back and leads the AFC in rushing that year. The next year, he is gone, injured in a... One of the worst games I've ever seen in my life where they lost to, at Seattle to the Seahawks, never to play for the Bills again, only to go on to San Francisco. Jim Ringo took over when Lou Saban famously went in to Ralph Wilson, the club owner, and said, Ralph, I think I've lost the team. Ralph famously answered, well, where did it go? <laughs> uh, and then Jim Ringo took over. The Ooh, they didn't the like, coach. by the way. Right. They didn't like right. Jim Ringo. I mean, they finished. Uh, Jim Ringo's record was like two wins in 20-some games as uh, coach of the Buffalo Bills. So they went through a big down period. Chuck Knox came on after I had gone out to the West Coast for a brief time and uh, resurrected the team with a lot of veterans, the Phil Villapianos, the Conrad Doblers, the Isaiah Robertsons, and guys like that. And by the time I got back to town, uh, it was the reins being turned over to Kay Stevenson. Another big Now, but let's tell you about Kay Stevenson's coaching staff. Who was on that staff? Pete Carroll, Jerry Glanville, and Lane Kiffin's father, Monty. Really? And they were that bad? Yes, they were. Unbelievable. <laughs> they were. Hank Bulla then took over. <laughs> These names are like, wow, yeah. blast from the past. Hank Bulla takes over, and uh, the club literally pulled the shoot on him in a game in Tampa so that he would get fired. I can have uh, confirmation for that from Fred Smurlis, wow. Jim Haslett and company. And when he was dismissed, the guy who was doing the color in the preseason telecast was hired as coach. His name, I think you've heard of him, Marv Levy. Yeah, I've heard of him. And uh, he, did, he did all right. And the first thing Marv Levy did was go to the waiver wire and claim this kid from the Oilers named Steve Tasker. And uh, from then on, history. nothing yeah, but yeah. success. Now, you're friends with Bill Pauline yeah. and Marv Levy, and you told me if there's a hockey lockout, you're going back to Buffalo when Pauline goes on the Wall of Fame and rightfully deserved. Oh, you know? Very much deserved. And I hope there is no lockout, number one. But yeah. if there is, that will be a nice respite from the lockout. For right. Me, no lockout. We don't want any lockout. Folks, that's it. Thanks to our guest, Pete Weber. We'll be right back. Run over me. But we're fixing to get a burnout here. We're going to see what this thing will do. I like them gangster walls on there. Oh, yeah. Right here is fine with me. If this is where you want to go, this is what we'll do. Now, we're looking for a lot of smoke on this right here, a lot of loud noise. And we're going to interview this man when he gets done here. Look what a shifter in that car. That's... <laughs> yeah, buddy, that's what I'm talking about right there. What's your name, young man? Bill. Wild Bill. Bill. Wild Bill. Crazy man. I don't believe it's Wild Bill.